Hi guys, fairly short video today. Um, I just want to show you my eyepiece collection. Not to show off, but I know when I start it, uh, with just the st two standard Skywatcher eyepieces. Um, yeah, I didn't realize that there were any other options or what would, how much better they would be. You know, they're clear, you can see through them, they magnify things, um, that was all good. So, uh, but over the last year or so, I've actually increased my, my eyepiece collection and also the way I store them. So let's make a start. So the first things first, this is my eyepiece box, uh, well, accessory box really. Um, so as you can see, it's a Stanley toolbox and uh, probably the, the scale of the video makes it look bigger than it is. But uh, yeah, about 18 inches across and a foot deep and three inches. You can find them in most hardware stores. It's got an extra lock on the front, which is quite helpful to make sure things don't fall out. Um, and then if we look inside, uh, everything's sort of held in foam. I'm gonna just switch to a closer view so you can see that better. Okay, so just taking a, a little closer look, what you can you can see what I've done. I've got this uh, this foam. Okay, I had some black foam and and then later on some blue foam, um, and I've cut out pieces. The foam itself uh, came in about one inch deep, so there's actually a, a couple of layers. There's a little bit in the bottom, one layer below, and then another layer on top. Cutting it wasn't particularly easy. I found the best way in the end was uh, I tried all sorts of things, whether it was a Dremel type attachment or a, or a hacksaw blade, um, but actually a good sharp uh, knife is probably the best way to do it. You know, a hobby knife, but with a longer blade. I'll come back to that one in a little while. Okay, so um, what have we got? So here over this side, we've got the two standard Skywatcher lenses, uh, eyepieces. Um, so the Super 25 and a Super 10. So they just stay in here. Actually, I use them quite a lot, to be honest. Uh, they're easy to get out, they're light. I can keep them in my pocket. And uh, yeah, I just use them when I'm starting out. Next to it is a collimator. Um, I've got two telescopes. One's a five inch Mac, which doesn't need collimation. The other one is a 10 inch Newtonian, and it does. And this is a laser collimator. Basically, it, it projects a laser, laser pen pointer type beam out of that little hole in the center. Um, and there's a, a, lay, uh, a reticule on the side there. It bounces down, touches the mirror, comes back up, and as long as it passes straight back through, you know it's optically aligned. If it's not, then you've got to go through collimation. Another video for that anyway. What else have I got? Okay, stuff for general astronomical. So head, head torch that's painted red. Um, a rear bicycle light, which is great. I think it's quite bright, uh, but it's still a good red light. So that fits in just about in there. Uh, a couple of Barlows. So over this side, I've got a Celestron two times Barlow. Uh, it's actually got a, a T-ring, a T-mount on the back of it, which is basically a, it fits onto the thread. Um, it's an M42 thread. And on the other side is a mount for, in my case, a Nikon, DSLR. So I tend to leave that one on there because with the DSLR and the 10 inch Newtonian, I often need a little bit of um, optical amplification, which the Barlow gives me. I've got a uh, three times Barlow in here, a cheap one to be honest, uh, same deal. Uh, I haven't got the, uh, the extra um, T-ring on there, but it's in there anyway. A couple of filters, moon filters. So moon and sky glow quite useful. It's basically like a, a little ND filter. Um, so it just adds a bit of contrast or, and also darkens it down when the moon's bright. Um, another little pen torch, red one. And uh, so plenty of, plenty of, plenty of things for, for light. And then over this side, I've got uh, the various lenses, eyepieces. Sorry, you can tell I'm a photographer because I keep calling them lenses as well. So let's start with the biggest one. And that's this one. It's a uh, Mead 24mm SWA. Um, yeah, I'm really impressed with this lens when I got it. Um, just simply if I take the eye, eye caps off, you'll see uh, how big the, the ocular is. And uh, it's very good eye relief. It's also got a very nice 
um, twist up cap um, to give you some cover and its field of view I think if I remember rightly is 70 degrees so uh, yeah that's a great first um, eyepiece if you're looking around the, the sky and trying to zoom in on something trying to find it first that's the best one to use very nice big field of view and that's true for the next one down now, I bought this one second hand in fact I bought both of these second hand so I saved myself some money there because the axioms when they came out were really expensive so this is a, a Celestron Axiom LX it's a 15 mil focal length um, yeah, okay, obviously multi-coated and it's 82 degrees if you can see that 82 degrees field apparent field of view Same sort of deal on the the eye cup. It's a twist up eye cup um, So that works very well as well. And actually this is my favorite lens. I have to say um, It's it's really really nice to use the extra uh, um, Angle of 82 degrees means that it gives me the same as about a 20 mil uh, eyepiece anyway but a bit more magnification. So I get the same field of view as a 20 mil, but a bit more mag, so it's fantastic on the moon. So the next one I'm actually uh, missing, actually, is something around the, uh, the, t the, the 10 mil mark to get to replace the, the Super 10. Um, the closest one I've got at the moment was one I bought off eBay, and it's a, a, a six mil, six millimeter long eye relief, uh, multi-coated, 66 degree ultra wide field of view it wasn't very expensive about 30 pounds um, so you've got a fairly small ocular on the back as you would expect on a six mil but a nice big one for the eyepiece and a, and a fold up eye cap as well it's a great lens I have to say for the money it gives a really good field of view it gives it nice and sharp it's sharp to about 80 percent of the uh, um, uh, field of view that you, when you're looking through it and uh, yeah uh, I'm, I'm very impressed for the for the money yeah I was uh, I'd, I'd recommend that one actually you can find those generic ones I think the best one to look for is the one with the this gold um, marking on it that seems to be suggesting at least that it's a little bit more premium and then last but not least I've got uh, this Orion Epic ED2 it's a 3.7 mil eyepiece. It's huge. Look at the size on this thing. You know, I mean, there's the 10 mil. <laughs> um, there's a 25 mil from Skywatcher. So actually, uh, in dimensions, it's 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 huge. It's also quite heavy. It's probably yeah, not quite twice the weight of that one. But the advantage with this is, you can see it already there. It's a huge uh, ocular. Um, and actually very good eye relief. This is a permanently up eye cap. Eye, eye cap. Um, and actually, yeah, it's not really got a good, uh, a bad sweet spot. So you can just get over the top of it and you get a really good magnification. It's a high power uh, eyepiece. Small at the other end. So obviously the, the light focuses through here. There's multi elements in here to make it get bigger and, and put it into uh, your eye. Um, what do I use it for? Planetary work. Jupiter looks great. Um, Mars looks good. Haven't managed to see Uranus yet. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it's very good for the high power stuff, that's for sure. Some doubles I'm finding with that I can use either the 6mm or even the 37 to split some very close doubles when I'm using the 10 inch high scoop. It's beyond the range of the 5 inch, inch Mac. Um, it's too powerful for that but actually for the 10 inch it's about spot on uh, certainly in the UK anyway so um, yeah that's a, that's about it for that I've got a few, few speciality things in here so that uh, there's a little bit of a TARDIS in there I've got a hole in the bottom and it's an illuminated reticule eyepiece excellent for um, for setting up for polar alignment I'm not sure if you can You'll get the, the, the view through there, but there's actually an illuminated crosshair inside. Um, so you set that up to, to get your actual center of view on a star for when you're doing alignment, etc. A couple of spare caps, bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, 
another uh, adapter. In this case, it's a um, it's a straight through adapter, so I can actually, without a barlow, this will fit into my two inch um, uh, eyepiece holder. So yeah, there we go. That's about it. Oh, I suppose I should mention the last bit is uh, I've actually got a, a ball head here. So for the DSLR work, what I often do is um, is to mount this, the camera on top of this, and mount this on top of the mount. Uh, it's got a little um, screw adapter, so it fits on the Skywatcher mount very nicely. And then I can do wide field um, astrophotography, but it's also tracking as well, because it'll be on the motorized mount. Okay, that's about it. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I'd recommend certainly starting out with the, the uh, um, your existing eyepieces, but I found quite quickly that the Super 10 needed to be replaced. The Super 25 is okay. Super 10 needed to be replaced. Um, and actually that's the only one I don't have as a 10 mil. The 15 mil is very good for that. And the six, so I go either side at the moment. I've been looking at a BST Star Guide, a nine mil. If I get one of those, I'll do a, a short write-up on that anyway. Okay, there we go. That's my eyepieces anyway.